Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Qing Xingyi from Renmin University of China. Uh, today, I will present our work on key value data collection with local differential privacy. Uh, it is a joint work of Renmin University of China and uh, Hong Kong Polytech University. <coughs> uh, in this talk, I will first introduce some background knowledge of uh, uh, local differential privacy. Uh, based on this, I will present our pr uh, practical motivation and the uh, problem statement. Uh, then I will give our solutions, including a, a baseline approach to iterative models and uh, an optimization strategy. Uh, after that, I will show the experimental evaluation of our proposed method. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, nowadays, data collection from individual users to collector is more and more uh, pervasive. However, this may come with privacy issues. As an answer to uh, privacy-preserving data collection, local differential privacy, uh, always say LDP, uh, is a privacy model where each user locally perturbs uh, their data and then sends it to, uh, uh, to an untrusted data collector. Uh, currently, uh, randomized response has been the predominant technique for LDP. Uh, specif specifically, when a user is asked, asked um, are you HIV positive, then the answer uh, may be yes or no. <coughs> and to, uh, for the sake of privacy, this user may give the true answer with prob probability P and an uh, opposite answer with the prob probability uh, 1 minus P. Uh, LDP is a promising privacy preserving model. It has been deployed in many uh, real products by several major internet companies uh, for um, simple data types such as the uh, uh, categorical data or the numerical data. And currently, uh, there is no existing LDP solutions for uh, key value data, which is an ex extremely popular data model. Uh, here is an example to collect app usage data uh, in smartphones, where the key is the app identifier and the value is the screen on child of each app. Uh, to collect this key value data with LDP, we need to design a new approach. Uh, there is a naive solution for key value data perturbation. For example, uh, for this key value pair, uh, cancer is a, a disease and the, uh, sorry, the key cancer is a disease and the uh, value 0 0.2 is uh, uh, its diagnostic value. Suppose we use the ex uh, existing method uh, for categorical data, KRR, to perturb cancer to fever and use um, the existing method for numerical data, harmony, to perturb uh, 0 0.2 to uh, 0 0.4, then the perturbed key value pair is like this uh, uh, fever, uh, 0 0.4. However, as we see in the left table, uh, each disease uh, has its own value domain, and uh, this uh, 0 0.4 is not in the domain of fever. Oh, sorry. Uh, therefore, uh, we say a uh, key value correlation is a big challenge for a uh, key value data perturbation since this is due to the key value correlation. <coughs> uh, for, key value, for key value data, we focus on two fundamental estimations, that is uh, frequency estimation over keys and uh, uh, mean estimation over values. Uh, as both frequency and mean are associated with a key, our first step is to convert a user's key value pair set, uh, to its canonical form. Here is an example of um, data conversion. Suppose there, uh, there are six keys in the universe. Uh, a user has four uh, key value pairs with key ID uh, uh, one, three, five, and six. Uh, then as for its canonical form, um, these four pairs will be set into the positions of index uh, 1, 3, 5, and 6. And uh, other positions will be marked with an empty key uh, whose key and the value will be set uh, as a zero. 
after key value, uh, key value pair uh, conversion, we consider to uh, design a protocol for key and value perturbation. Here, we also give an example uh, that consists of several users and only one uh, key in the universe uh, in the left table. <coughs> oh, um, we need two phases for key and value perturbation, respectively. For key perturbation, uh, we can use a randomized response this uh, directly. And then the value perturbation is according to the perturbation results of the key. <coughs> uh, here the problem is when uh, zero is perturbed to one, we need to assign a new value to it. Uh, so as this. Uh, Vista. Uh, as users has no background knowledge about the true values, how to choose uh, this value is a new problem. Uh, and uh, here we use harmony as a building block, and we further uh, correct our liars by uh, <coughs> harmony. Uh, as will be seen in the experiment, uh, this correction will uh, significantly uh, improve the, accu uh, the accuracy. Uh, here we give our uh, baseline approach, where well, the assign value is randomly drawn from the value domain. Uh, the framework of data collection uh, is shown in this figure. Uh, as we see, this is a one-time data collection, so it has low uh, communication bandwidth. Uh, however, this, uh, uh, this approach cannot um, achieve satisfying accuracy uh, due to um, due to its poor assignment of the Vista, since Vista is uh, just randomly drawn from the value domain. Uh, to improve the accuracy, we propose an uh, ether model, private KVM, uh, which uh, assigns a Vista as the mean of all values. Uh, this figure shows the framework. Uh, here, uh, we add uh, step six and uh, step seven to, uh, as a, a feedback to improve the accuracy. In this model, the output mean of the um, previous iteration becomes the assigned value of this iteration, uh, so that the mean estimation will gradually approach the ground truth. Mm. With multiple iterations, this approach improves the accuracy of mean estimation. Uh, however, it also comes with a high communication bandwidth, as multiple interaction between users and the data collector uh, are needed. In addition, it also needs a number of iterations to be determined in advance. Uh, intuitively, we may think of a, a question, uh, how many iterations are enough? Uh, in reality, uh, it is quite difficult to determine this number uh, to this end. We propose uh, KVM plus. <laughs> uh, here, we define a cost function f in terms of r, the number of iterations. Uh, you can see uh, f1 F1 is the uh, accuracy cost and the F2 is the communication bandwidth. Uh, by minimizing uh, this total cost F, we can derive an optimal uh, number of iterations uh, R here. Uh, obviously, this approach strikes a balance between uh, accur accuracy cost and the communication bandwidth and has the lowest total cost. Uh, but it still needs to consolidate cost. Uh, here is a comparison of these three proposed solutions. Uh, private KVM is based on private KV, uh, which improves the accuracy. And further, uh, private KVM plus strikes a balance between accuracy and communication bandwidth. Uh, based on the above three uh, approaches, we further propose an optimization strategy by applying batch processing and uh, virtual iterations. That is, uh, that is to say, in uh, each batch, uh, only the first iteration is really executed, and the others are just virtual iterations, where uh, the collector can, direct, uh, can directly predict the estimate mean without user in involvement. 
uh, and further, the mean prediction can be derived by a recursion. Show as this. Uh, this optimization strategy has two advantages. Uh, first, it reduces the network transmission overhead between user and the data collector, as users are not involved in virtual iterations. Um, second, since uh, virtual iterations do not cost any privacy budget, uh, real iterations can be uh, allocated more of it, uh, and therefore improves the estimation accuracy. Uh, here we show some uh, experimental evaluation. Uh, as for the data set, uh, we conduct experiments over six data sets. Uh, the first three uh, are synthetic data sets whose keys and values follow, uh, follow a Gaussian uh, power law and a linear distribution. Uh, and the other three are real data sets. Uh, as we see, the first two uh, are uh, App usage data, uh, whose key is the app identifier and the value is the um, screen on time of a user in a certain period. Uh, the, the, uh, the third one is about uh, sales records. Uh, to measure the accuracy of the estimated frequency and mean, we use two matrices, uh, the uh, relative error and uh, mean square error. As for the frequency estimation, we show the results of private KVM comparing with uh, three existing methods. We observe that uh, our method is more accurate than the other three existing methods. Uh, and for all methods, we observe that uh, for, fre uh, for frequent, more frequent a key, more accurate the result. And uh, uh, overall, private KVM is less uh, effective affected by the frequency of a key. Further, for uh, mean estimation, we show the results of private KVM comparing with uh, the other two combinations. Here, a value perturbation primitive in private KVM is uh, replaced with two existing methods for mean estimation. Uh, we observe that uh, private KVM is more accurate than the other two, especially for a small privacy budget. Uh, to show how well the key value correlation is retained, um, we show uh, these two figures. Here, the black line denotes the uh, true Gaussian distribution. Uh, we observe that the uh, estimate mean of private KVM follows a very uh, similar distribution as the real mean in the left figure. Uh, however, uh, a combination method, uh, KR and Harmony, uh, the result is, uh, seems uh, very flat. Uh, it also uh, deviates from the true distribution. Mm. This indicates uh, key value correlation is well retained in uh, private KVM. Uh, here is our conclusion. Uh, we propose uh, three uh, solutions for key value data co uh, coll collection with local differential privacy, and we further compare uh, these three approaches in terms of uh, estimation accuracy and the communication bandwidth. Uh, we theoretically prove the estimation is unbiased and uh, always converge to the ground truth. And we also optimize our solutions to further improve the performance under a uh, large privacy budget. That's all, thank you. Any questions? So there's one microphone in the middle, and then I have one in the front here. Um, so do you assume each user has a multiple uh, key value pairs or just one key value pair? Uh, a set of key value pairs. So in this case, the privacy guarantee is that uh, per, value, uh, per pair uh, privacy or per user privacy? Uh, for user privacy, uh, we we use the uh, sampling to for 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 
a set of curular pairs, and then uh, we we don't uh, just uh, uh, allocate the privacy budget for each uh, key value pair uh, evenly. We just use the uh, sampling technique. Thank you. Hi, I'm Damien from Google. Um, another way to do uh, sort of quasi local differential privacy data collection is uh, the ESA infrastructures like the encode shuffler analyzer. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this. Have you compared this to these methods uh, where, you know, instead of having only one direct communication between client and the server, you have a shuffler in the middle that encrypts stuff and stuff? Oh, sorry. sorry. There's been papers for, for doing a private data collection that are based on the two-step in infrastructure, like encode, yeah. shuffle, and analyze. And I was wondering how your method compares to that. Um, do you mean, um, except for the uh, frequency estimation and the mean estimation, can we adapt uh, this method to other query? Oh, um, I think uh, our solution is uh, task specific. So uh, we, um, for now, we only uh, focus on the frequency estimation and the mean estimation. Yeah. Maybe a related question: Have you tried non-local differential privacy and see whether uh, how much utility loss there is as compared to local? Um, <laughs> Actually, we, we, we don't uh, uh, compare this in the, uh, as for the quantity. Uh, since they are uh, focused on different settings, the centralized differential privacy uh, focuses on two neighboring data set, while the local differential privacy uh, uh, consider two um, tuples, just neighboring tuples in the local, local setting. So you're saying they're incomparable? Uh, Mm, I think they are uh, different settings, so we don't. <laughs> okay, any other questions? All right, let's thank Vicky one more time.